All right. Are we ready for 5K to half marathon racing shoes? Yes. yes. All right. Angie, I'm going to have you go first this time. We'll just switch back and forth. All right. So my top 5K to half marathon shoe is not a 2023 shoe. I'll just preface that. But <laughs> my top 2023 shoe for this distance is without question the On Cloud Boom Echo 3. Uh, I My top shoe, by the way, is the Alpha Fly One, um, but obviously that is not a 2023 shoe. Yeah, Alpha One, man, <laughs> OG. Yeah, it is. Whew. Yeah, it's great. But this shoe was actually really close in ride for me to the Alpha Fly One. Um, first of all, this shoe has a nine and a half millimeter drop, which would typically mean that I'm not going to like it. But even when I'm running slow in it, I don't notice the heel at all. And it's because you can see that it's got like not a huge heel bevel, but it's got one like it really just gets the heel out of the way for me. Um, and when I land, it just feels like I can land on the midfoot. There's no interference from the heel. And it's just it's pretty firm. Like this isn't a soft shoe. So you just land. It's really snappy. It rocks your forward. It ha it's not the same feel as like the AirPods and the Alpha Fly. But it's that same like firm bounce and roll feeling. So, you know, it's not the Alpha Fly One, but it's 2023's version of the Alpha Fly One for me. Um, I was really thinking about using it for the New Haven 20K, <laughs> and then I decided to use the Vaporfly Three actually. Um, but I hope to use it in a uh, shorter race soon so that I can give you guys a real update on how it is for shorter distances, but the ride's great. Um, I do have concerns about outsole durability. I've got about 50 miles yeah. on them. I mean, it's not terrible, but I don't think they're going to last as long as my vapor flies. And I know that Matt has, uh, yes, worn off most of the rear foot of his shoe. <laughs> um, so we'll see how long it lasts. On says that it will last for four marathons. So I don't know. Like Maybe I'll 100. get 100 miles. Maybe I won't, but I'll let you guys know. But it's my 2023 pick for shorter distances. Sweet. David? I might actually go last because I think I'm going to break the rules. What do you mean? What what rules? What rules? I don't have one. You know, <laughs> I, have I, have one? A three, I have a, I have a three-way tie. Okay, go for your three-way tie. Let's see. <laughs> so situation dependent. So yeah. actually, it's a two-way tie with a tie for the other two, whatever. Um, I'm just going to say, let me grab this one real quick. So the one that's a standalone. And then the reason why is because 5Ks and 10Ks can look different, whether it's a cross-country course on the road. There can be a lot of turns depending on the neighborhood or how the races are structured. If it's going to be kind of more of a technical 5K where you're doing a lot of turns, maybe it's a little wet outside, whatever, like kind of your terrain, uh, uh, not terrain proof, but you're like, your shoe that can, you're going to be taken out if it's rugged out is the Takumi Sen 9 for me. Now, it's a little bit lower than some of the other super shoes. It has really good traction underfoot. It locks down really well. And the shoe just feels really nimble and you're able to corner really well. And so if I'm running a race like that, there's no question I'm taking the Takumi Sen 9. However, <laughs> that's where this three-way tie comes in. Because if it's not a course like that, then other shoes start coming into the picture. Um, so technical courses, or if I had to run some kind of a cross 5K to 8K or something, I'm probably going to choose the Takumi Sen 9 if I'm not spiked up. Uh, now the other one's a two-way tie. And if it's a course that doesn't have that much turns or it's really one that you can kind of almost time trial it just get in and put the work in the two-way tie is between the vaporfly next percent three and the on cloud boom echo three so both really responsive shoes both really can turn over and i've run two really solid four mile efforts in both of these just fine and like it, they're those type of shoes that the more you put into it, the more it responds. And you don't get that out of a lot of shoes. And I really notice it in the Cloud Boom Echo 3, but that foam is, it's a little bit firmer. And I will say it's also the platform is a little bit more streamlined. And if you do have some stability concerns, 
or some fatigue resistance, like that's where I do notice that the Cloud Boom Echo 3 can kind of fight you a little bit. It almost reminds me of like the Audios Pro 2 where it was like really, really fun until it wasn't. And so <laughs> that's why that's like a 5K, 10K option for me. If I could hold it down for a marathon, that could easily be on that list too. But I just don't quite feel comfortable putting that shoe on for a marathon yet. Uh, Next percent three applies all the same things. A little bit more of a comfortable fitting upper. I will say I think it's a little bit less responsive if you're like really pushing into the ground than the Cloud Boom Echo 3. But we're we're twisting hairs. I mean, they're both really good racing shoes. Um, traction's a little bit better on the Vaporfly. There's, I, I, the traction's not bad on the Cloud Boom Echo 3. It actually, those little knobs do pretty well. And I have, I think, 70 to 80 miles on this one. So I think that 100 mile um, uh, prognosis is, is pretty accurate because I'm starting to wear through the heel here. I'm biting into the foam a little bit more and that forefoot's starting to get a little bit slippery and I don't really beat up shoes. So I feel like that 100 mile for most people is probably going to be pretty accurate. But um, yeah, they're both just really solid options, both light, both responsive, and they both can get it done if you're putting it to the pavement. Um, neither of them corner that great. So <laughs> like if you're taking sharp corners or you got a lot of U-turns, that's why I had that caveat with the Takumi Sen, because if you're having to do a lot of cornering, the Cloud Boom Echo especially, I do not corner very well in that shoe. Um, Vaporfly, I'm a little better at cornering in, but it still isn't that great. So I would say if you're, yeah, technical courses, Takumi Sen 9, two-way tie, pick your poison for the Cloud Boom Echo 3 or Vaporfly if it's not a technical course. Can't go wrong with either. So I'd say I'm going to kind of semi-do what David did a little bit, um, where for some of the shorter efforts I did, the Vaporfly 3 for sure was a shoe that I I grabbed. So I did a two-mile race against my students from West Coast, and I told, and I let them do, so it was two miles for me. It was a half mile for a, a relay team that was racing me. And I managed to hold them off and I was freaking out about what I was going to choose. And I did choose the Nike Vaporfly three. <laughs> However, the caveat to this and why I'm going to split this is this shoe, like beyond like a mile and a half, two miles is just not stable enough for me. Like I need a lot better, more stability in the heel. And with how narrow this thing is, the fatigue hit me. Like I used it for a 5k recently. You could see I was doing fine through about a mile. And then my mechanics just, I like was, it was not stable enough for me. So for shorter stuff, 5k up to half, I think this would be a great option for a lot of people. I would not personally, I know Andrew and David, you guys like it for marathon stuff. I would never use it, but for, like shorter stuff, it is fast stuff and bouncy stuff that I think it does really, really well. The only challenge is if I want something a little close to the ground, that's where it kind of misses that. And so I was going between the Takumi Sen 9 and something else. The Takumi Sen 9 is great. It's one of the lighter of these shoes on the market, but a shoe that I've continued to grab, even though it's super low drop and I feel like it's always not going to work for me, has actually been the Hoka Celia Road. It's something that I've actually really, yeah, really, really enjoyed. Shoe. Where not plated, by the way, but still really stiff with this uh, firmer super foam. It feels lighter than the listed weight. And I've measured it. And I'm like, this doesn't feel like, I think it's like listed at like 7.8 ounces, 7.7. And I'm like, that doesn't feel right. But uh, tell me if I'm wrong on that. Maybe, I, David, I feel they like they changed I'm, their sample size. I think the size, right? so it's size ten. That makes sense. Got it. So the actual, I think is like that might be what it is. Low seven, but it's just been a really fun, snappy shoe. The only, my only thing is, it just feels like it fits a teeny bit long, but that might be because the toe box is surprisingly wide. Um, for how? Uh, sorry, I keep unplugging myself here. <laughs> Literally, the one me. thing you said before the episode started, yeah, I'm going to do, do my best. And, yeah, don't yeah. unplug myself. You can still hear me, right? That didn't cause Yeah, 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 you're good. Yeah, I just can't hear you. But yeah, I really <laughs> enjoyed this as a shorter distance shoe, and I'm kicking myself for never having the guts to actually use it in one of the 5Ks um, just because it's a good shoe. I always freak out and go, oh my gosh, there's a high schooler here, and then you know, grab Vaporfly or something like that. But yeah, it's a really <laughs> great shoe. I think Hoka's done a really good job of bringing some faster stuff to market. And like I'm going to say again, I'm excited to see where they go with the lessons they've learned from these shoes because this is a really great option. 